this little video will be about finding sources. And I used to always say, just go to Wikipedia and look at their sources. But the problem with that is that a lot of them are blocked using when we use our school computers. Even it turns out if you're using a district device at home and sometimes the sources themselves, it's hard to find what information Wikipedia is getting from that source. Sometimes the links have gone bad. So what do you do? Well, you just turn to Google. Now you also want to be using your outline to guide your research. So here's a couple sections from the encounter seven thing. And for this early life, I can Google the person's birth and just get those answers uh, for the parents and the siblings. When we get into the more detailed stuff, like a who influenced the person to become who they were, that's gonna be harder to find. But I'm gonna open up a tab and I've been using Lewis Braille as an example. But let me try someone more modern uh, like Bernard Kroger. So I can type in Bernard Kroger and I've got a Wikipedia article, which I recommend reading just because then you find all the information that you need to find somewhere else. And I can even get right here when he was born, uh, who his parents were and all that information. Cape Cod, Massachusetts is where he died. But I don't want Wikipedia as one of my sources. I want pages that I don't want any kind of online encyclopedia. But here's one from the immigrantentrepreneurship.org. Now that sounds like a pretty good source. So right here, I can find his family. There's an introduction just like I want in my research paper. And there's all this information in here. And what I can do is, so he was born on January 24th, 1860 in Cincinnati, Ohio. I can go to my outline and put notes on this outline, January 24th, 1860. I think it said Cleveland, Ohio. And you notice I'm using red font just so I can see the things I've added, Ohio. I'll go back and double check that. Cincinnati, Ohio, okay. I'm also, and this is the challenging part, I need a new doc because I'm going to copy this whole thing and just the entire, and you look at this is, this is a great source. If you don't Kroger, there's a lot of good stuff on here. And I also notice what I like at the bottom, it's got my article title. It's got my author's name. It's got the website name. It's got the publisher's name. It's got all the stuff that I need for my document or my works cited page. Now, it even has some links and stuff. So I've pasted all this on here and I'm going to put some notes. I also want to clean it up a little bit. For example, uh, all you see how these are all spread out like this. I can change all that. And if you want me to do it for you, I can show you how to do it. Um, See, if I highlight that, I would go to the help custom, let's see, custom line and paragraph spacing. That's it. And see this after that says 33. I'm going to set that to zero. And now I've taken all that extra spacing out. I didn't do it on that part. But everything else I might want is in here. And so well, this is our, our twofold thing finding sources and taking notes. And you know, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need the picture. And then, like I said, luckily on this one, at the very bottom, here's my citation stuff. I'm going to move it all the way to the top, which is where I want you to have it. And then I'm going to format it in the proper way. Not right now, but some point later. But I want to keep on looking. So that's a great source, but I want you to have at least four sources. Probably everything I would want is in that source. 
but I would end up just writing a summary of that source. I want to find multiple sources as I practice researching and getting information from various places. Find a grave. I could get some stuff from there, but just about where he died. ANB.org. I don't know what that is. Let's see. I do not currently have access to this article. So there you go. I got to keep looking. I'll click over here. Here's HBS Harvard Business School. All right, let's try that out. Great American business leaders of the 20th century. Not a whole lot about him. So I would not use that because it really doesn't tell me a whole lot. Ooh, how about the untold truth of Kroger? That sounds interesting. They've been in business. For... All right. So this looks like a really good one, too, because for one thing, it's not just the facts of his life. They start off as a tea company. Now, what a lot of students are doing as they find good sources, they're making a document that they're just calling sources or maybe source links. And so they're gathering up things. And this is something new that I don't know if every computer does. It. I think my school computer's been doing it too. I copied the link, but when I pasted it, it switched it over to the actual name of the article and the website, not the website address. And I could probably change that because I'm going to need the website address. When you are making your work side page, when you paste that website address, if it does that to it, you've got to change it. And, and I'm going to keep on looking. I'm just going to look and look. And anytime I find one, it looks pretty. NNDB. Don't know what that stands for. Tracking the entire world. And one of the things I'm doing is I'm kind of looking at the length of stuff. But if I want his mom and dad's name, I've got that right here. That's pretty, pretty handy. He had a couple of wives. So this one may not be so bad. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it on my little source page. That's how you find your sources. You just keep Googling things. And if you can't find stuff from your outline, you know, I go back to this outline and it said, uh, who, well, Kroger's father, his father was a grocer. So, um, but maybe Henry Lay, we were researching him earlier. So I'm like, how did Henry Lay get into the potato chip business? Well, it says here, he worked at a biscuit company, got fired because of the Great Depression. Then became a traveling salesman delivering potato chips to people. Oh, that's from Wikipedia. Uh, potato chip king to be made fateful stop in Clarksville. This is my answer right here. So if you're doing Henry Lay, I'm going to save it onto this right here because that's, I'm going to share that later. That's a good thing because that, that, that fateful stop means this something happened right here that caused him to become the pet potato guy. And we could do that for everybody. You can just type in, what am I looking for? Um, what do they have to overcome to become who they were? And see, there may not be an answer to that. What? obstacles did um what's that hershey guy's name milton hershey have to overcome he didn't succeed at first he faced challenge certain challenges says he didn't get a good education he failed at making uh candy uh, he was stopped by sad things i have a feeling some Students may have written that. As far as the animals go, same thing. Now, the animals, when you're doing the endangered animals, this is a whole lot easier because um, why is the sea lion important? 
and it just pops up. Why is the sea lion important? The proximate role played by seals and sea lions is obvious. They are predators and consumers of fish and invertebrates. And if they're not there, then these fish that they normally would eat would take over. Uh, why is the sea lion endangered? And for all of these, you find multiple sites. It's really the endangered animal thing. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to do research on. So that's it. Just Google the facts, find good sites, save the links, and then start copying and pasting them, do some formatting, and you'll be on your way.